Welcome to the show, Gino. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so for those of you who don't know yet, who are you? Tell us a bit about yourself and your background. Um, to kind of keep it simple, I'm a dental student in the day, a family man by night, and TikToker whenever I have the time in between. So um, it's super cool that I get to be here as a Nihongo Master Ambassador. So thank you for having me. This is kind of like my first podcast experience. So. I、oh, hope、really? I marry. <laughs> yeah, have this kind of janky setup in my room. Have like boxes stacked on the top of each other just to keep all the camera <laughs> all stabilized. Yours look more professional than mine. I have pillows just holding all of mine up, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so、um, we discovered you on your on one of your videos. Um, teaching colors in Japanese with the little Among Us characters. Oh yeah, that one was、um, like right around the summertime when the whole Among Us phase was like blowing up. So I just thought, hey, maybe I could teach some colors, like throw some reds, blues in there. And so from there, all the followers just started coming in. I wasn't really sure what my theme of my TikTok was gonna be like. I first was kind of messing with, you know, comedy skits and maybe like dental related videos, but then. You know, I was like, I'm I'm the Japanese. Maybe some people would like to learn a little bit. So I made a few videos in Japanese, and those were like the biggest ones. And now a lot of my followers are those that want to learn Japanese. So how did you learn Japanese? Were you born there, or do your parents speak the language? So I was born in Kanagawa King,、uh, the Kanagawa Prefecture in Japan, and my mom is Japanese, so she's full. My dad is actually half Filipino, half Spanish, so I'm kind of mixed. So growing up. Uh, my mom didn't really know how to speak English, and so she really was the one that kind of helped me learn Japanese. So reading like books in Japanese and watching like Doraemon and like Anpan Man growing up, like those were my <laughs> shows growing up. So having her like talk to me in Japanese and all these resources, even like my mom's side of the family are all in Japan too. So I had a lot of people that I talked to. Nice. So you said you were born in Kanagawa. Yes. Which part? Of Kanagawa, ah、uh, Yamatoshi. Ah,、uh, I used to stay in Kanagawa, so I moved from Tokyo to Kanagawa. Oh,、yeah. really? So you said you have extended families in Japan. I actually got to go visit them before the whole pandemic happened. So it was like a good opportunity for me to bring my family, my wife and daughter. It's like their first time in Japan too, and it was my family's first time meeting them. And it was a lot of fun.、Uh, there was obviously some language barriers, so I had to do a little bit of translation here and there.、Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, I think just being with everyone, because、uh, I don't really get to see them like maybe once in maybe three years.、Wow. So it was really nice. So there was a language barrier. So、uh-huh. your wife and kid cannot speak Japanese. Right. So my wife is、uh, Filipino. So. I'm trying my best to pass on my Japanese, you know, language, my Japanese roots to my daughter,、uh, but it's so hard, especially since you know I speak English at the house. It's like I really wish I had someone else that spoke Japanese, so it's like there's like that、mm. passive learning that my daughter can pick up on. Um, I started like when I bathe my daughter in the shower. Every time I like wash like a body part, like her arm, it's like, what is this? And she'll be like, ude, or like, what is this? Like onaka, <laughs> you know. So she's like、Aww. picking up. So she calls me Dada、oh, as like dad. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever she wants to play, she'll be like Dada to asobu, like、Aww. that kind of thing. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, trying to make it fun for her.、Mm. So she's picking it up really well. How old is she? She just turned three in、wow. January. So she's three. How old、mm-hmm. are you? So I I know、oh. you get a lot of this question. <laughs> I'm I'm twenty five. Wow! When I first、Four、saw your videos,、century. I thought you were like nineteen, twenty. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> that, that that's pretty good. I mean, people still think I'm still in high school, so I get carded. Yeah, I do as well. Like everywhere I go, it's fine. <laughs> But then, when we're like forty, you will look will look thirty, so it's okay. <laughs> <Yeah> . So we have season four focusing on Japan with regards to traveling, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners are excited about visiting Japan once travel restrictions begin to lift. From your previous trips, what are some things that you look forward to? Yeah, so whenever I go, I'm always in Tokyo area. So I love going to like Shibuya and、uh, like shopping districts, like Ginza,、uh, Roppongi, and those places. But I do notice, like especially as a dad, there's a lot of things catered towards kids.、Mm-hmm. So department stores they have little play areas, and they have you know Tokyo Disneyland and Sea, and it's called Sandio Pirorando or something.、Mm-hmm. 
that we got to go take my family to. Maybe for our listeners, can you share a little bit more about what they can expect if they're visiting Japan for the first time? One thing that you're, you're gonna notice is a lot of people there are super nice. It's like almost uncomfortably nice, you know? Some, <laughs> like, I guess one example was when we were in Japan and、um, we're kind of like walking the streets and there's like emergency vehicles coming through. And obviously, like, they're going super fast. They need to get to the place they need to get. In America, you know, if you're driving and you forget to merge to the right, they're gonna like stall right behind you and they're just gonna honk like nonstop, like nonstop. Like, they don't wanna go around you because that takes too much time.、Mm. So they're gonna like force you to move. But in Japan, it's like not only does everybody get out of the way, emergency vehicles like ambulances and fire trucks, they have like loudspeakers that announce what they're gonna do next. So they'll be coming up to like a four way intersection, they'll be like, Migini Maga. <laughs> so it's like, we're turning right, we're turning right. So, yeah, everybody's super nice. And especially like if you're a foreigner, like if you go to a restaurant and you know, you meet some you know, Japanese businessmen or students, like they're gonna w a n t to talk to you, even though they may not know English. They're just genuinely interested about you know, Americans and like foreigners in general, too. So, I think you'll have no problem making new friends. And I think another thing is coming from America,、uh, we do have a lot of trash cans in the public.、Um, <laughs> there's no problem <laughs> trying to throw things away. In Japan, it's like impossible to find a garbage can, right? You know? <laughs> oh my god, story of my life every day. Right. I just carry a bag with me. Just so you can throw all your rubbish away and then put it in your pocket or in your purse or whatever, right? I don't know why they do that. <laughs> they have vendies everywhere. But then they don't have the cans for it. Like, I come home with more, more trash than like shopping bags, you know? Exactly, I know. <laughs> A lot of the Japanese people I met said that they don't think Japan is clean. With Singapore, we have trash cans everywhere, so that's why we're like decently clean. But for Japan, no trash cans, yet they're so clean. How is that? They just all vaporize. They have like, <laughs> they're, they're so like ahead in technology. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They just have like, you know, ray guns and like they just shoot whatever rubbish and it just vaporizes. <laughs> It's all gone. Maybe I could ask you, like, what are some things people can look forward to in Okinawa? I'm sure the culture and the environment's really different from Tokyo. Okinawa, it doesn't feel like Japan. For one, there's way, more many, there's way more foreigners, but specifically Americans because of the military bases here.、Mm. So if you go to it's like American Village, which is like a, a neighborhood, Just for all the restaurants, the bars, and stuff, everyone speaks English. So you can practically go around Okinawa without knowing Japanese.、Um, oh. I've met a couple of people here who do not know Japanese because, you know, it doesn't feel like Japan at all. Wow, really? Yeah, it's crazy. So that's, that's the big, I think, cultural differences. I can't understand the Japanese here. Like, my Japanese is not that good. But I can understand Tokyo level. Came here, and the other day I went to a coffee farm, and the owner's like an old man, like probably 70 years old.、Mm-hmm. I cannot understand him for the life of me. <laughs> you just have to nod and like stand there, like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> just keep bowing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, last thing, just super random.、Um, so I live in Loma Linda in California. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I just exposed my location. <laughs> But I, 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 <laughs> to bleep I, them out. <laughs> actually, no, maybe it'll be good because I go to dental school there and I need patients. So, yeah, if you're in the Loma Linda area, <laughs> I need patients for my dental just clinic. Just、um, by. <laughs> But、um, yeah, so Loma Linda is apparently one of the seven、um, regions in the world where they have the longest living group of people, like over 100 years old. And so I found out because,、oh, yeah, because apparently Loma Linda is a huge Adventist community where they don't eat meat. Most of them are vegetarian or vegan.、Oh. And so on the list, I saw Okinawa is up there on the list as one of the regions where there's a lot of long living individuals. And I heard like the diet is different and maybe just people in general in Okinawa are more healthy. So I don't know. I was wondering if you had any idea of that. I don't think they're more healthy. Like, I. <laughs> Their pork is amazing.、Mm. One, two, they have their like, own alcohol, which is like awamori,、oh. and it burns so bad. So it's like <laughs> whiskey. Maybe it cleans out your entire system. Yeah, so I don't know how that's healthier. <laughs>
Let's talk about your TikToks. You have almost half a million followers. That's mad. Woo! Who's your main audience and what kind of content do you post? Uh, so yeah, so I guess a lot of my followers, they follow anime and mm -hmm. uh, are interested in Japanese culture. And so I do a little bit of both where I teach like hiragana, um, katakana, and common Japanese phrases that they can use when they visit Japan. Mm -hmm. And here and there, I do throw in a little anime references um, just to kind of relate those two back together. So there's this one video that blew up because of that famous song, Mayonaka no Door by Miki Matsubara. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty interesting how that song went viral that kind of helped my videos mm -mm -mm. get a little bit more traction because I used one of the songs in one of my videos. So thank you, Miki, <laughs> <laughs> for your song and your contribution <laughs> to the music world. So I do notice a lot of your followers enjoy watching anime. Mm -hmm. And there's always an ongoing war between watching anime with English subtitles or with English dubs. What's your Ooh. take on that? Oh Ooh. no. <laughs> You're making me rage war on my followers. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a... <laughs> might lose half of my followers after saying this, but <laughs> subs over dubs all yes, day, every subs day. Over dubs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lose listeners as well. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I understand though, like when people need or when people can't read the subtitles as fast enough, um, I've had people come up to me and say like, yeah, like I have dyslexia and I have a hard time reading the subtitles. So that's mm -hmm. why I listen to English dub. And so I was like, okay, like, yeah, I didn't really think about that. Mm. Um, but subs over dubs. <laughs> yeah. It'll... yeah. All the way. All the way. <laughs> yeah. It helps with Japanese too. I think a lot. I have a friend that um, learned pretty much Japanese just by watching anime and mm. reading the subtitles and kind of studying them, studying mm -hmm. the phrases. And I think through anime, you can learn like, phrases that are not commonly taught in school, like textbooks, you know, because mm. a lot of them are conversation based. So. Yeah, and like the reactions as well. Uh, maybe some of them are a bit over the top, but oh, yeah. when you get the reactions, you know, you kind of know when to use them in real life mm -hmm, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, yeah. Like how to react with the different tone of your voice and everything. Mm. I think anime does an amazing job with their... It's like you can say eh or eh, and there's like two different meanings, you know? <laughs> exactly, like, or like nani or like nani. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> it matters, yeah. the tone matters. Mm. Sometimes I would walk down the street and then I would hear people speaking like that. I was like, shit, that's kind of like anime. <laughs> I'm in an anime. <laughs> that's like, everybody like comes up to me, oh, you speak Japanese? Say something in Japanese. And they get really disappointed because it doesn't sound like anime. Yeah, they need to know it's not, it's not an everyday thing. If they come to Japan and speak like how people do in anime, then... Yeah. <laughs> but definitely, yeah. Subs over dubs. Yeah, 100%. Remember that, kids. <laughs> I do know some people that became fluent in Japanese just by reading manga and watching anime. So it's possible, like me as well. I started learning Japanese because of it. So with mm -hmm. that said, you're an important ambassador for Nihongo Master. How do you think our online learning system differs from others that you've used? I think it boils down to how much you're willing to invest in learning Japanese or a learning, learning a new language in general. Uh, it does definitely take time and, you know, sometimes money too. But in the payoff of, you know, learning a completely new language, of course. Uh, with that said, though, I do see Nihongo Master's efforts to make the learning experience really interactive with each lesson. You know, I'm able to assess my progress and see, you know, how I'm doing in my journey of, you know, not really learning Japanese, but maintaining my Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, especially, I suck at kanjis. <laughs> like, I, I can't do any kanji at all, so... Yeah. Um, no, gave, gave up yeah. on that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's so hard. Like, man, ha, like, hito and, you know, haidu. Or like, <laughs> oh my god. Or like the kanji for like close and open, they're like kind of the same as well. So pressing the, the, the buttons on the lift, I just get confused. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, for sure. It's like, which one was it again? Or like, yeah, I'll, just, I'll just try. <laughs> Yeah, no, but you guys do have a lot of tools. It's super beneficial for long-term learning. So with that said, use my affiliation code <laughs> <laughs> down below. <laughs> Just had to slide that in. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, of course, you know. The Hongo Master is where it's at, guys. Try your free trial today. Thank you for your feedback and support. It's really nice of you.